In this episode of Cars Plus, we're going to show you how we changed out the front end of our 1976 Chevrolet C10 pickup, which you can see some nice shots of the finished version here. But we had to start with one that had, unfortunately, for whatever reason, as you can see, a GMC grill in it. We don't know why, but that's why we got the truck. In this video, we will show you some tips, tricks, things to point out, partly because of the change of the grill, but in general, if you're doing this, the things you need to do in what order so that you will have a successful outcome. Stay tuned. Here I am with my power, actually drill of course, what I'm using as a power screwdriver, removing the screws from the headlight surrounds. Those are new headlight surrounds that I purchased from LMC Truck. One of the key things to note is the new ones are made of plastic, the originals were made of metal. If you want to have what was original, you'll have to probably replace your metal ones. I didn't want to expend that amount of money on what's essentially going to be a nice shop truck, so I opted for using the originals. There you see me taking out the GMC grill. Also the funny GMC bracket there on the side, there's one on each side. They're absolutely wrong for the truck. They will fit the rest of the truck and will fit the GMC grill, but they don't have much to do with that Chevrolet grill at all. You see me removing the bracket and the latch in the center that latches our hood down. You will need for this particular job a Phillips screwdriver. Nice to have that uh, drill that I can use with a Phillips blade. Also 3 8 7 16 and half wrenches and ratchet wrenches or ratchet sockets that we can use. Those are the only tools you're really going to need, except you'll see late in the video something I'm going to do, and you'll understand that when we get there. Some of the things like having extension just makes it easier. I'm taking out that centerpiece. At this point, I don't know something, but I'm going to tell you ahead of time. I'm going to find out that piece will not fit with the Chevrolet latch that I ordered which is necessary for the Chevrolet grill. There we've got that center support. That's really the support for both the grill and the fact you're going to slam down on a latch and that gives you extra support on that metal plate at the top or metal stamping at the top. Here I'm just going to rough fit the Chevrolet one and see how things work out. I figured giving the age, I was going to buy myself a new latch. Now I'm going to find out, uh-oh, the center support does not work with the Chevrolet latch. And we'll go into that a little bit more in a minute. I'm seeing how the heck you put the grill back in there. Notice I had to swing it in from the bottom and bring it up. Well, later on when the trim's both pieces of trim on here, it'll be even more apparent it only works one way. That is a Chevrolet bracket. I've taken the GMC brackets out. Looking at how this is going to have to mount. Looking at how it's going to have to mount on the opposite side. They are right and left. Yes, I'm having to learn how they go in there. Remember, it had the crazy GMC stuff in there first. Now I'm checking against the grill to see what happens with that centerpiece. I'm learning by God that it absolutely will not work. And I have the grill in there checking everything, trying to see how everything's going to line up. So here you see I am working with the upper trim piece. 
on the grill. I bought two brand new ones. We're going to take the old one off here. Having troubles finding the points, you notice I'm going to use a mechanics mirror and I'll get a flashlight shortly. Up there on the top, that's a plastic spreader. It's used for like Bondo. That's to help from damaging everything. I've already refinished the upper black stamping, which you may have caught in the beginning of the video. I completely refinished it. If I'm going to do all this work, I might as well refinish that also. So here I am working to get this piece out. And it's much harder to get out than the bottom one, basically because it's really hard to lay on your back and get your head in there and see that stuff. But it needs to go because both the top and bottom trim piece that were on the vehicle were damaged. And I figured, heck, let's just replace them. The replacement parts, Mel MC truck, and no, I don't work for them or get anything from them, are cheaper than having the other parts repaired and plated. Give me a little contemplation about how I'm going to have to go about this. Yes, I'm back with that center grill piece. I haven't yet decided I need to order one. I'm going to decide that, but in the meantime, I was looking at it to see if I wanted to cut it apart, weld it, and modify it the way it had to be to make it work. And yeah, I gave that quite a bit of thought because I could have certainly done that. It would have been cheaper, but it also means that I have to absolutely figure out where the cut has to be weld everything in and go to some effort and eventually I'm going to decide here I don't want to do it that way. But I did go and look at it extensively to see what I thought. Now notice I'm putting in the bracket and tightening it down. This is going to become another one of those mistakes. Because I had to replace the brackets or if you took yours out and you had to replace them then back in because you took them out, painted them and it looked beautiful not a good idea at this point. And you're going to see shortly why. Here I'm putting that new Chevy latch in. I bought a new latch. I figured good grief the latch is almost 50 years old. Probably ought to get a new one. Here I am with the driver's side bracket. Again looking at it, what the situation is. Deciding, oh gee I need to put this in here. Mm -mm -mm. Not going to work out that way. So here I am putting on the lower trim piece for the grill. Right now, a lot of it is covered with a blue plastic. Later on, you'll see I'll peel some of that blue plastic off, at least the last of it. You want to make sure you get the stuff off from behind. That's why it's kind of got a blue color, is that's a protective plastic layer. Be sure you get it off from behind before you fasten it down. Keeping it on now keeps it from getting scratched. And here you can see I'm starting to fasten it on. The key with this is, is to get all the fasteners in there loosely, then go back and tighten them all up. See there I'm peeling a little plastic off that's still on. Taking off more of the plastic. You don't want to get it fastened behind. You see there I'm taking it all off. That protects it until I get it's safely on the vehicle. Now I'll go back and continue fastening. And once I'm done with it, I can make it completely tight, making sure all the plastic is off. There's the last little bit. Try to get this roughly 50-50. You know, you can use a tape measure or something else to get it roughly 50-50, but that won't be the end of it. You'll know about that later.
Right now you'll notice I've got those two Chevrolet brackets in there, but that isn't going to work out. See I'm taking the bracket back out. Yeah, you can't fasten the lower trim piece in with the brackets in. So don't make the mistake I made of putting the brackets in first. Do the lower trim piece first before you put your brackets in. And as I said earlier, you can fasten these totally tight right now. There you see, I'm going to have to take the other bracket out. Same problem, both ends. Lower trim piece first, then you can think about brackets later. Now you see I can go back and put the brackets in. And I know I'm stressing this, but I wasted a lot of time putting in a bracket that I couldn't leave in there on both sides. Even if your brackets are in the truck, what this is teaching is you're going to have to take the brackets out to do the lower trim piece for sure. And while I'm messing with that, I'm just going to make a comment about the GMC front end. For the life of me, I can't figure out why anybody did that. Because it wasn't a good front end anyway. Rather in the realm of nonsensical to me, there were more Chevys than GMCs produced. Seems to me you could have gotten the right parts. Just checked the fit of that grill just to make sure it was going to kind of work out. Now you see I'm going to finish up the top trim. The top trim can go in after the brackets, which is exactly how I did it. And you'll have to go across and fasten everything. I'm not going to show you all that, but you'll fasten the entire top drum down tight. Both the top and bottom will be tight at this point. Now I'm going to finally put that latch in basically permanently. I've had it in and out a couple of times, trying to figure out everything with that centerpiece. Decided I'm not going to use the centerpiece at all or the right part. And now I'm going to actually put the latch in the way it's supposed to be. One of the things we can note at this point is shortly I'm going to do some touch-up painting. That whole upper stamping that you can see in the beginning of the video, I completely refinished it. If you're going to go to all this work, you might as well do it. I found that low gloss black by Duplicolor, it's an engine paint, low gloss black, is a dead on match for these parts from LMC truck. Can't tell the difference. So when you see a paint can, it's actually Duplicolor, low gloss black, and it is an engine paint. Here I'm wiping it off. I'm going to touch up in just a moment. Use some paper towels on some holes and we'll touch it up. Right now we're going to test it. Uh, I didn't shut it very hard, did I? A lot harder. Works good. Here we are going to do the touch up. Use some paper towels to plug a couple things and I'm going to touch it up. You notice I'm not even going to use any masking. I've done this an awful lot. It wasn't windy, easy enough to touch it up. If 
I'd have gotten anything on the chrome, I could have wiped it off with lacquer thinner, but I didn't. Just a couple little things to touch up there. Remember, Duplicolor Logos Black, it's an engine paint that they make. And it's inevitable you're going to have some marring that really mostly touches up the bolts that I shot there. Alright, now we're finally going to get serious about putting the grill in. With the top and bottom pieces in, note you got to put the bottom in first. Get it well in there, and you can snap in the top. It will not work the other way around. You can't put the top in and then try to put the bottom. It doesn't work. Now you're going to see me put in a screw on the top passenger side. They're Phillips screws. We're screwing into that new Chevrolet bracket on each side. We'll be doing the same thing for the pass pardon me, driver's side. But while I'm screwing that in, I'll let you know I discovered you can't do the bottom two. There are also two in the center, but without that center bracket in there, we're not doing those now. I will tell you the center bracket can be inserted after the fact from the bottom, which is exactly what I did when it came in from LMC truck. This grill is going to get fastened with only four screws for now, but that'll be fine because we're not using it that much at the moment. All right, here are the headlight surrounds. Remember I told you those are plastic. They're not the originals. You want original metal ones, you're going to have to have your, yours replated. That certainly costs more than buying plastic ones from LMC Truck. Because this is a shop truck, I opted for the plastic ones. Making sure everything's going to fit. Sort of checking the reveal there. Seeing how it looks. Because you got to remember, this is made almost 50 years ago. This is not robotic level precision. There is a wide tolerance and everything. And you have to deal with that and even it out yourself. All right, I'm on the passenger side. I have discovered I cannot put the bottom screws in that grill. So I'm going to unfasten the entire passenger side lower panel there that has the parking lights in. There's three or four passengers you have to take loose, but you see you can pull it out. Now I'll be able to put the screw in on the passenger side of the grill bottom. Not hard once the panel's all the way. Put the panel back, refasten it. Not going to bore you with the whole refastening, but that's what you have to do. And with the headlight surrounds, it's very apparent what you have to unfasten in this area. Just so you know, that center piece on the grill, it comes blank. You get a stick on Chevrolet bow tie, apparently, how they did it back in the day. Thing about the passenger side is easier for me being right-handed than the driver's side. I have to do a lot of left-hand work there. Yuck. Should be the last one on the passenger side. Now we're going to check that passenger side headlights around fit. Why are you checking the fit? Because those two center strips above the grill and one below the grill may have to be adjusted. I'm going to fasten that headlight surround in place. Several screws, start them all before you tighten them 
completely down, tighten them down when you get them all started. Remember the tolerance is very wide here, so you really need to go about it that way. That's also why you're not seeing me use a power driver, because I'm just starting everything. Almost done with this Odyssey, except for the fact you will not see me put the center bracket in, because I had to order it. As I said, you can insert it from the bottom and put it in there. All right, here I am with the driver's side one back again. Now I'm going to check the reveal here. I'm looking across for the reveal, and I'm going to decide it doesn't fit quite right. Here's the trick for that. Coming up, we've got a block of ash, something like ash or oak. You want a hardwood and a ball-peen hammer, and I'm tapping those grill strips into place. It's going to take more than one time until I'm happy with it. But the idea is to get the grill strips relative to the headlight surrounds to be 50-50 and look even. And again, there's a lot of tolerance here. That's the way they used to do it. So they've designed it so that that headlight surround slides in underneath those two center grill strips and you want to get the reveal about even on both sides. These are the two other tools I hadn't told you about. Hardwood block and a walking hammer. There, it's starting to look better little bit more. Yep, now we got to finish this. This is our point of finishing the screw on this side. We put that screw in. Then we're going to put that headlights round back onto the vehicle. And we're going to be done. Obviously, I have skipped a bunch of this. You saw it on the other side. It's all about getting that screw in. So you got to loosen the several bolts, take them out so you can release that panel. Now I'm doing the left-handed effort to put it back. But there you see the method for doing this. And hopefully you've learned the order from me because of the mistakes I made. And things work out much better for you. Like and subscribe. We're going to see you later.